Hello everyone, this is Keith here. Recently I got a comment on my Project Zomboid video on how to, you know, the video on how to set up a Project Zomboid server. I got a comment of someone asking me to do a video on how to set up mods for a Project Zomboid server. And I'm going to do just that. Okay, so there's two paths to go. And which path you go down depends on what type of server you're running. If you're running a Steam server, i.e. your server uses Steam Vac, and you're running the server from a Steam version of the game, then congratulations! Setting up, a mod, setting, up, setting up mods and maps for your servers are pretty straightforward. Um, if you're running a non-Steam version, it's a bit more complicated, but not really. You just kind of have to manually download the mods and put them in places. And this is one of the reasons why I recommend if you're running... If you want to get a set up a product Zomboid server, you know, get the Steam version because it makes things a lot easier. Um, for instance, because the Steam version ties into the Steam Workshop, whenever you add mods to it via the Steam Workshop, it will automatically update them, it will automatically download them and apply them, and anyone who connects to your server will get a notification that they need to download the uh, mod and then they'll click OK and it'll do that. It'll download the mod from the workshop and then they can connect to your server. Whereas if you run a non-Steam server, people you will have to search the web for a mod, um, add it, download it manually, unzip it, add it to your mods folder, and then all, your, all the people who want to connect to your servers will have to do the same. They have to find the same mods, download them and unzip them, and it's just kind of a mess. And that's why I tend to recommend running a Steam service because it's usually more straightforward. Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys how to do both. Um, I'm kind of just going to walk you guys through the Steam one first. Before I get started, I'd like to mention that there's this excellent uh, tutorial by Tuseyu, I believe that's how you say his name, on the Indie Stone forums, who uh, explains step by step on how to set up a mod, modded server. And uh, it's pretty good, um, pretty straightforward, pretty nice very very excellent blog post so if if anything I say doesn't make sense or at the end of this video you're still kinda of scratching your head I'm gonna post a description or I'm gonna post this forum post online or excuse me I'm gonna post this forum link into the description of my video so that way you guys can see it and read it and because this really does go into greater detail than me Anyway, so yeah, first thing you're going to want to do is if you're running the Steam version, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the Steam community page for Project Zomboid. Um, but actually, before you do that, you're going to want to go to your settings for Steam. You're going to want to go to interface, and you're going to want to click this box. You want to check this box here that says display Steam URL address bar when available. I'll get to I'll tell you why that's vital that you do that. You can go ahead, yeah, so to get to the Steam Workshop page for Project Zomboid, you just find Project Zomboid in your library, and you can go Browse Workshop, and there you go. So, you're going to want to go down. What I like to do is I like to look at the mods from most subscribed, because this is, this is another nice feature of the Steam Workshop. It gives you an idea of what mods people like to see in servers, because they're the most popular ones. Um... Yeah, so, you know, just go by here, look at the mods, and see if you want them in your server. Make sure that when you, before you download the mod, make sure that um, it's not a single-player mod. You don't want to add a single-player mod to your multiplayer server. It'll it'll bust things up. Like this one, for instance, is single-player only. So, you know, just make sure before you download the mod that it's compatible with the uh, online server. So, yeah, anyway, so say, for instance, um, maps and mods... Um, maps require a little bit more work, but basic mods like Hydrocraft and stuff like that are pretty easy to do. Um, so anyway, yeah, once you find a mod you want, for instance, I'm going to use Hydrocraft, which is probably the most popular Project Zomboid mod that I can think of. Just adds a bunch of more shit to the game. You're going to want to go up here. And this is why we enabled the Steam URL address bar, because you, to add the mod, you, you see up here, you're going to want the ID number. That right there is the ID number. Um, good mods, if the, mo the person who created the mod 
is nice enough you'll also include it down here as well so you won't have to get the address bar but sometimes it don't so it's just a good idea to have that enabled um, and you also have the mod ID here you're gonna need both of these to add the mod to your server so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the workshop ID we're gonna go into our server here is my server that I run at my house which runs the Project Zomboid server you're going to want to open the configuration file for Project Zomboid, which on Linux is in home, Zomboid server, server test.ini. And you're going to want to go down with a line that says Steam, uh, wait, workshop item, there it is. You want to find the line, this one right here, which says workshop items. And you're going to want to add the workshop ID to that list. Now this list is just a uh, list that is separated by semicolons. So you know if you want to add a mod you just hit semicolon then do the ID and if you want to add another one you know simple as that. So anyway all you really do is you just add the Steam ID. So we do 49844 uh, one, four, and then there you go. And the next step is so what happens is when you add an item to the workshop items section what will happen is next time you restart your server um, the the project zomboy dedicated server will go ahead and fetch the workshop item for you and it will get it set up so yeah so that will download the item and that will also tell people who connect to the server that these mods are required in order to play on the server so that's done you know just save out the file and you know keep it like this like this is mine for instance because I use quite a bit of mods um, but yeah, just you know, save out or save it there. So yeah, the next step is um, so now we have the mod downloaded. The next step is to actually add it to the server. So in the configuration file, you just want to find the section that says mods, and um, then you want to add the mod, the work, the mod ID. In this case, for Hydrocraft, it's Hydrocraft. See right here. Once again, this list is a semicolon separated list you see here hydrograft and that's it so yeah so you add the workshop ID to the uh, workshop items and then you add the mod ID to the mods and that's it now if for some reason the steam workshop page doesn't mention the mod ID what you can do is you can just add the workshop ID and it will download the mod and I'm gonna show you where it downloads the mods it'll download it in the Steam data folder for the Project Zomboid dedicated server inside the uh, root of the Project Zomboid dedicated server folder there will be a Steam apps folder and then you'll have workshop of content and then here are all your mods from your workshop uh, items line in your config you're just going to want to find the ID for instance uh, 498 so this is it right here so you go into that, and when it downloads it, um, it should have, in one of the folders, it'll have a mod.info. And this is just a simple text file, which will explain um, just a ba some basic things. Like it gives it the name, the description, etc. And that's how you, in this file, is how you can find the ID, which is right here. So in the future, if you know, if you download a mod from the Steam Workshop, and it doesn't have the mod ID for some reason, like maybe the guy who put it up just forgot to do it, add it. Um, you can find it that way. You can just go into the downloaded mod files and then just get it that way. So yeah, and that's it. So you know, once you add it to your config file and you add it to your mod line, um, once you add the Steam uh, Workshop ID, uh, let me. Let me explain it better. Once you add the workshop ID to the workshop items section of the config file, and once you add the mod ID to the um, mod section of the config file, just kill the server, and that's it. And then just restart it, and what will happen is the um, server will actually fetch the mods for you, and then it'll run them, and that's it. Congratulations, you're now running a modded server. And you just do that for as much mods as you want. Now, where it starts to get a little bit more complicated is when you want maps. Because the thing about maps is they don't fall under the same, like they're a mod, but you kind of have to mess around with them a little bit and move the folders around somewhat. 
Um, and you also have to config spawn points, which is another kind of weird thing. Um, once again, I recommend, if this part confuses you, and this is the part where it gets kind of complicated, I recommend reading this tutorial. Because, you know, it has a section on maps that explains it better than I do. Anyway, yeah. So, to add a map to your server, you're going to want to find a map that you want to add. In this instance, um, I'm using Phoenix on my server, so we're going to use this as an example. And you would add the workshop ID, right, to the config file, like you did for the other mods. Uh, in this instance, uh, you see here, we if we find workshop items, we have the, uh, I believe it's this one right here, we have Phoenix added, so you just add Phoenix to the workshop items like you would with any other mod, so maps are no different in that regard. But now the different now the part where maps differ is so instead of putting the map in the mods section of the config file, you actually put it in the maps section. But here's where it gets a little complicated. The maps are kind of downloaded in a different area, so than what the game uh, wants to see them. So here's what happens. The first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to add the map to the workshop items section of the config file you're going to want to restart your server and then it'll download the uh, map then what you're going to want to do is can't find the damn there we go then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the steam con you're going to want to go into the steam folder for the dedicated server then you want to go into Steam Apps like we did before, and you're going to want to find that um, map. This is, is that it? Yeah, that's it. So once again, it, it organizes it by Steam or Workshop ID. So yeah, it's a little confusing. But inside that map download, it should say Mods. So you go into Mods, and then it should say Mod Phoenix, and you're just going to want to check Mod Phoenix. Okay, and it has media, so we're going to go into there to media um, and then inside media we're gonna have maps and then you should have a folder with the actual map name and then inside that should be all your files so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go into the uh, downloaded item and you're gonna want to go all the way till you're in the maps section um, and then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to create a link from this to the actual maps location that it's supposed to be in so you're going to want to cd, once again, to the project zomboid, uh, the project zomboid steam directory. You're going to want to go into media, maps, and as you can see here, I've already done this. Basically, um, that when you add a map to the map section of the config file, it expects to find the map in media maps. But because it's a workshop item, it puts it in like Steam apps. So you, you kind of have to move it around. So what I did was I just created a symbolic link to it. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna create a symbolic name, a symbolic link with the name of the mod ID. So in this instance, we're gonna do ln dash s, right? And remember, you gotta do this inside of the dedicated server Steam files under media maps you're gonna run ln dash s and you're gonna to wanna to type in the entirety of the map directory uh, so it's in here it's in common uh, steam apps workshop content and yep that's phoenix right there and then once you get to that folder inside of the maps one you're going to want to stop there and you're going to want to do dot slash and you're going to want to do for the name of the link you want to make the name of the link the mod id so in this case it's going to be mod uh, phonix there you go there you go and now if you run file on it what this does is 
this is a link to that map from the Steam Workshop folder. And the reason we do this is because normally what people usually would recommend is they recommend copying over. over. But the issue with that is every time there's an update, you have to recopy it. So my solution is simple. You just create a link so that way when the config file, so you're gonna wanna open the config file again. Actually, let's just go ahead and do that. Oh, the server test ini file. And then you can finally add the map under maps see here there's a map section you just add the map from the mod ID so what happens is when you you see here the section here that says map it looks for mod Phoenix and it looks for that under the steam directory media maps which is where we are here um, but once again when you download a map through workshop it doesn't put it in the right folder so what we just did with the LN command is we created the link so that way um, we have a file here that says mod Phoenix but it's not really there it's just a th it's just a file that points to the actual location of it so it's kinda like cheating so that way we don't have to like copy the files over we can just tell it okay when it tries to access this redirect it here um, pretty simple pretty straightforward this is in my opinion the best way to do it yeah and there you go um, and then after that you should be able to restart the server after you've added it to the map section and added it to the workshop items list. You should be able to just restart the server, join your server, and go to the modded area. Now, in some instances, I don't know if this is still a thing, but you'll you may have to go into your Zomboid folder and under server. You may have to create a spawn regions file. Um, in this instance, I did I did have to do that. And the way this works is you just want to add a section. Um, and you see here for mod Phoenix, you just do media maps mod Phoenix, and and each map should include inside its files uh, as spawn points dot lua. And all you really have to do is just pinpoint is just tell the spawn regions uh, folder to um, point to that so that way people can actually when they join your server they can actually spawn into the uh, custom map this is probably the most important part that's glanced over by a lot of server by a lot of server guides interestingly enough yeah you're guaranteed not to have a server test spawn regions file so you're gonna have to create it once again it goes into home zomboid server it's the same place as the I and I it's just called server test underscore spawn regions dot lua and you just add a section for the map um, I'm gonna show you guys an example of how you would add a section so you know you could take these for example these are already here take that and you know you just paste it down here and you just replace it with the um, mod ID so in this instance it's gonna be mod uh, I'm going to try to find a good tutorial on how to explain how spawn regions work. I know there's a forum post about it. I'm going to post that into the description of the video to give you guys a better idea of how it works. Yeah, and then once you're there, you just uh, type in the path of the spawn points .lua file, which should be inside of the actual file for the map. In this instance, you know, it's in mod Phoenix. But the weird thing is, is it, it's so weird because these files are relative to the root of the Steam data files, or the game data files, rather. So, you know, you don't want to type a slash here. You don't want to do slash home, all that. You know, you just want to do media maps, the map name, and then the spawn point Lua file. That's it. So in most cases, you can just do mod. You can just do the, the ID of the map. So for instance, uh, Phoenix, and then you can just do, like like I've done up here, just spawn points .lua and that's it, you're done. Um, once again, that part's a little weird to explain, so I'm gonna try to get a, uh, find a good description on how to do a spawn points .lua file, so that way, you know, you guys can read that and get a good idea how that works. But yeah, so after you've added the spawn regions file, you know, restart your server, and it should uh, allow you that when you have fresh character um, it should uh, when it asks you where to spawn it should allow you to spawn into the modded map and there you go so that has been my video on how to install 
Project Zomboid mods, mods. Um, this particular bit was about how to do it for a Steam server. Um, God, I don't really want to go into explaining this for a regular server because I'm already 20 minutes in. But basically, if you're running a non-Steam server version, what you'll have to do is you'll have to find the mods manually. What I mean by that is because you're running a non-Steam server, you won't have the Steam Workshop to help you out. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to like Google Project Zomboid Mods. There's a Nexus for it. Um, there's a website, pzmods.net. That's a pretty popular repository. But the best place to get it for, in my opinion, is the forums. So you go to the Indie Stone forums. You scroll down here to Mods. And once again, you don't have to do all this if you're running the Steam version. But if you're not, you have to go, you have to, go to the Indie Stone forums, find a mod. Okay. Uh, for instance, say I want this mod, Orthman's gun mod. Um, you know, in, Steam, in the Steam version, it's as simple as adding the workshop ID and adding the mod to the mod section. But because we're not running that, if you're not running that, you would have to download this manually um, and then unpack it in your mods folder, which would be in Zomboid. Um, Zomboid here, and you make a directory called mods. And then you would unpack it inside the mods folder. Um, and then once you've done that, I'm just going to remove it because I don't need it. Um, and once you've done that, then you have to add uh, the mod ID to the mod section of the config file. So, for instance, say you downloaded the Orthman's gun mod and you added and you created a directory in, in Zomboid called mods. Um, and you've added all the files there. Your next step would be to simply to you know the mod ID in the section of the config that says mods and then that's it um, and of course with maps it's a bit more it's kind of the same thing you kind of just have to you have to download the map and inside the map there will be uh, inside the download for the map there should be like a medias folder and a maps folder and you just paste that into your maps directory uh, which would be and to in the Steam data files for Project Zomboid, see here, you go in Media, Maps, and then yeah, and then you would have to download the map and then put its files here and then edit the config file and under the section that says map, you would add the directory name of the map. So there you go. You know, that's why I just prefer the Steam server. Um, version is because you know it does everything it's all automated for you um, and you know if you're running an on steam server once again people will have to download the mods before they connect to your server and it's just kind of annoying right you don't want to have you don't want to have people have to do that and you don't want there to be a wait you know if you if you want your friends to play the easiest way to do it is through the steam server version. anyway thank you guys for watching this video is going on for way too long now Thank you for watching me ramble on about how to add mods to your Project Zomboid video, or <laughs> to your Project Zomboid server. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Take care.